please. Get that nigga Dan Prescott up out of here, please. He ain't doing nothing. Get that Detroit shit. You feel me? Rep the D. You understand? Hey. Cowboys ain't doing nothing. They don't get rid of Dak. And they got to get rid of Jerry Jones. Hey, I agree with that one. Question for you. How many fourth downs does it take to beat the Cowboys? <laughs> and we're we're walking away quickly of that. Mm. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, it is Taco Tuesday, and I hope all your taco dreams come true. We don't have time to really enjoy um, having the victory of course over the Steelers, although we will look back a little bit and listen to how it wasn't so much about the Cowboys being beat up and injured and things like that as it was the Steelers just failed. The Steelers just failed that they just literally said, here you go, Cowboys, we're going to give you a charity win. And so we'll just leave it at that. Now, the thing that's kind of funny here, because there are no new ideas in the world. Th things have a tendency to repeat. And what's funny to me is where... There is this whole thing of trying to vilify C.D. Lamb. That C.D. Lamb was going off on his quarterback. And this is kind of like goes back to when Diggs was saying, shut your bitch ass up when he got beat by Dak Prescott and they're talking trash. Where they literally took that and tried to make it that the team doesn't respect Dak Prescott, that there's you know a problem here and things like that. And there was no problem there. There was no problem. That was, you know, Warriors out there getting beat. And, you know, my man didn't look good. And Dak Prescott, you know, lit him up. So they're trying to make stuff that isn't necessarily there. Okay, be that as it may. Here's the next part of the equation here. When there was miscommunication, and this happens, people don't understand that if you don't understand football, it's kind of like, um, if you've gone skeet shooting and maybe you don't have never been skeet shooting before, but here's the thing. If you go out and you say pull and you've got the shotgun, you're not looking at the target and following the target and shooting the target because by the time you fire and it gets there, the target's still moving. So you lead the target. Okay. You have to lead the target and you're firing to a point, which is called the mesh point. And that's where it's going to hit it. So in the NFL, guys are in there running their roots. You're not looking at him. You sometimes are throwing to a spot where you think you're going to be. And then when you have like with Kellen Moore, and this is a problem that Jalen Hurts is having, is you have combination routes where depending on what the defender is going to do and what he's going to, the receiver is going to read something and be in a different place. In which case the quarterback in that two and a half seconds, has to read the same thing that the receiver does and be on the same page to know where he's going to go while he's surveying and looking at a couple other guys. And this is not exactly the easiest thing to do. I know what haters will be doing right now is they'll be saying, you're just making excuses for Dak. He just sucks. Well, no, that was a, clearly the two of them were on the same page. They just weren't on the same page, and that happens, and interceptions happen, okay? And I, at this point, it, it, it doesn't matter who it's on. What I need is to fix it. Be that as it may, when they saw CD on the sidelines, they tried to lip read and say that he was basically saying, you're a bitch-ass quarterback, you suck, or whatever. But it's funny because, and I, I tried to find the clip, but I couldn't find it. I can only, everywhere I go, it's like the clip's not available. But if you go back to October 28th, 2013, Des Bryant on the sidelines with Tony Romo. And Tony 
uh, what, what was made up at the time was, you know, this serves nobody. That, that Des Bryant is just a loose cannon. He's going off on Tony Romo and he's, you know, the devil and this, that, and the other. And in reality, after they got the audio for this, when they thought that it was just Des Bryant being a loose cannon and cussing out Tony Romo, and he was literally saying, Tony, we the best in the league. They can't stop us, you know, and, and blah, blah, blah. You know, it wasn't the hate and everything else that they tried to portray it as. And that's one of the reasons why I'm actually doing YouTube. That's originally, you know, part of the reason why I started doing, it was originally Facebook and Cover 32, was because the narrative that you would always get, I would be like, that's not the way it is. And that's where I was trying to put truth to video. Actually, truth to Facebook originally posting. But be that as it may, that's what they're trying to make with C.D. Lamb. Now, best thing that could happen to the Cowboys is that Jalen Tolbert stepped up. That when they're double covering with a great defense and everything else, C.D. and, you know, there's a miscommunication. That the Cowboys had somebody else to lean on besides C.D., you know, when you have one receiver who gets a 1,000 yards more than the next guy, that's great that he's playing outstanding. But if he's taken out, you're screwed. And that's one of the problems the Cowboys had. They need to have a Robin to Batman CD. Now, I want to listen to, I want you to listen to CD Lamb after the game and see if you feel like there's a problem here. Because I saw in that game CD Lamb uh, take two guys block two guys on a pass play you're lucky sometimes you can get a receiver to block one guy he blocked two he cares about winning freaking games listen to cd everybody's calm everybody's composed i mean we understand what we got to do got to go put the ball in the end zone and that we did i'm so happy for him um I told him earlier in the week, like, he's going to be the reason that we do win plenty of games. And um, just kind of instilling that confidence in him within a whole week. And him along with Terp and JB, um, understanding that B Cooks is down now. And obviously we know, he knows that we still thinking about him. Um, Brandon, that is. But, uh, yeah, no, nah, that's huge on B. Um, dang, I, Tolbert, sorry. Huge on Tolbert, happy for him. And um, look, looking forward to next week. Yeah, I told him perseverance, man. That's that's all we need at QB, and um, he's he's the epitome of that. I mean, all the everything that he's able to overcome off the field and on the field, and um, yeah, man. Again, come out with the dub. Man, as long as we get in that end zone, I don't care how I get done. Um, again, shout out to guys, proud of the offense. Um, second half, obviously, I mean, it took a minute for us to get in the box, but we did. And when we did, it was crucial. And again, shout out JT. What'd you do for 90 minutes? What you mean, what I do for 90 minutes? <laughs> I'm like, bro, I was chilling. I'm off my feet, listening to music, watching film. For 90 minutes. How much uh, I mean, the record speaks for itself, obviously, and then having that momentum going back home. Uh, we understand the situation at hand, and knowing that we had to come out with this game with a dub, um, propel the momentum forward. Man, he's been good to all of us. Obviously, his experience speaks volume to the room, and he brings a lot of tools to the room. And um, again, JT was under his wing just as well as I am. I mean, experience can take you a long way, and obviously everything that he's able to accomplish going throughout the season, and then instilling the confidence in JT and helping him throughout every position on the field. So, um, man, just giving him that confidence to go out there and be himself, play his game, and do what we got to do and come out with a dub. Me and Dak are good. Me and Dak are good. We had how many incompletions? Two, three? I don't know. But um, just getting on the same page, obviously, uh, and we'll be fine. Uh, yeah, 
pretty much. I mean, DB made a great play. We're on two different pages. And, um, I mean, he got he got to give. There you go. There you go. And that is CD in his own words, you know. Hey, we're good. We're good. And so we got the Detroit Lions this week. Now, I'm going to say, okay, this is going to sound crazy, and or, or th maybe this is loser talk. Getting this win on the road, Pittsburgh, helps us out tremendously. And um, without this win, if we were two and three and then having to place the Lions, all of a sudden shit goes downhill. At the worst at the bye, we are three and three. That's better news than what most people forecasted would happen to the Cowboys. It's funny to me because they literally trash the Cowboys all offseason and say, you guys suck. You didn't do anything to help yourself. You're not any good, blah, 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 blah. You're going to start out the season two and five. And here it is. We're five games in and we're three and two. So we're actually ahead of expectation of a lot of people. Now, I know we're Cowboy fans, and we're not satisfied. We're mad that we lost to the Ravens and things and looked as bad as we did. We're mad that we lost against New Orleans. But you see how it is a week-to-week -week league in the NFL. You look at how Baltimore's playing right now versus the first two weeks. You look at how New Orleans is playing versus the first two weeks. Things change quickly. And so for people, you know, the, the, the Washington fans out there that are already punching their tickets for the Super Bowl and claiming about, you know, when we play Washington, people, we don't play the commanders until the 24th of um, November. That's almost two months from now. Teams are going to look totally different than they do right now. But I will say that we may be in a better position two months from now because hopefully we're going to get back some of the players that we lost and having learned and getting experience for other guys seeing Tyrone Wheat out there seeing Chauncey Golston out there you know seeing Osa and Digazua and, and Mozzie Smith making plays with Linville Joseph when we get back a Micah Parsons that now doesn't necessarily have to play defensive end all the time, then maybe we can find a better fit to get a little extra oomph from him. When we get Demarcus Lawrence back and add him to the mix, you can see that we can be a better team. When you get Celan Carson and you get Deron Bland, we have more people coming back. We literally have about seven players that didn't play in this game that we will have back that will help to make us a better team. And we're getting experience from other guys that were playing well. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. And in fact, this may be one of the better things that happened. The fact that Jalen Tolbert got his opportunity because Brandon Cooks is injured. That maybe now you recognize and say, he may be a better number two for us than Brandon Cooks is, who's getting older and got some injuries. And that's allowing the other guys to be able to step into the breach. When you've had problems with the running game and you start using Hunter Lipke in places, that screen pass for 16 yards is huge. And finding the right combinations. And this is, it, sometimes it takes a long time to get into a groove. And when you look at, shout out to, um, the San Francisco fans have pointed out they started out three and five and four and six and ended up being um, in the NFC championship games, you know, in the last five or six years or whatever. So, you know, a lot of things change quickly in the NFL. But I think your offensive line, that second half, with giving Guyton getting an injury and forcing Tyler Smith to go outside um, at left tackle was a better play for the offensive line. And some of these things hopefully will go forward. And so now as we round the corner and get ready to get out of here, um, I'm going to go to, this was yesterday evening, them talking about uh, the Cowboys win and things. And you know, it's funny that um, Ryan Clark seems butthurt. Ryan Clark um, talking about the Cowboys, and it's not about the Cowboys getting a win. And I want you to understand here, with uh, this is one of the pirated YouTube channels, okay? So they've turned it diagonally and stuff so it doesn't get cop copywritten and stuff like that. But, you know, th at least I won't get copywritten either. But I want you to notice game-winning drives. And this is, again, back to Tony Romo. 
They used to always say that Tony Romo was a choker, but at the time, he had more game-winning drives than anybody else. Let's go to the tape. Winning drive that they need him <laughs> most, yeah, in the NFL since he entered the league in 2016, trailing only Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins, Russell Wilson, and Matthew Stafford. Here's Dak after the win. Chance, um, just give us a, ch a chance on the two minute drive. Uh, I would personally was pissed about the, the two minute drive before half, obviously, right? Um, throwing an interception there when we can get points easily three, if not a touchdown. Um, two minutes, something I love, so just being able to get down for it, knowing we needed a touchdown. Um, we practiced that a lot. I'd say as much as probably if not more than any team in the league. Uh, so we're all very comfortable in that situation with the plays being called. Okay, I rarely talk about picks or anything, but Marcus, you weren't with us on Friday. I just want to point out that I picked your Cowboys for you. Uh, what did they do to there get this go, done Boogie. yesterday? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were able to control some of the game, and the run game was effective. Yeah. I think everybody saw it. I think Dallas, in order for them to win games, it's almost like I told RC this earlier today. They got to muddy stuff up like we've yeah. seen Pittsburgh do for so many mm -hmm. years, and that's what they were able to do with Rico Dowdle. They were able to get the run game going enough for Dak to get comfortable at times and I know even though the two interceptions came you looked at an offense that was not explosive it wasn't anything crazy or out of the ordinary they were able to just get enough going in the run game to create some of that play action opportunity and when you look at this team and we've talked about the backfield and the devoid of talent. This was a test that I thought they would have at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And they passed it up front when you talk about the run game. Rico Dowdle and the run game is the yep. reason Dallas was able to win that game, even though Dak could get a tremendous amount of credit and should for that last sure. second shot. This was the first time all year, Marcus, where watching the Cowboys offense, I didn't feel like CeeDee Lamb had to have a complete takeover game for them to move the ball, which Absolutely. is a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Some of that, as you said, is because they finally had success running the football with Rico Dowdle, who I thought was excellent uh, in this game. But also the other pass catchers finally showed up. I'm um, with Brandon Cooks out as well. Uh, Jalen Tolbert, that route he ran for the game when he scored was tremendous, but he made plays all game. Kevante Turpin also got separation. This is the first game all year where Dak Prescott had a tight window throw rate below 20%. He's thrown the most tight window throws in all of football, but for once it felt like he had room to breathe. Some of that is on the play calling. Some of it also is on the secondary and tertiary receivers getting separation, but all of it means that this Cowboys offense, if they can build on this, will be better than what we have seen so far this season. Yeah, I know we love to talk about the Cowboys on this show and on shows in general. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. Uh, but I want to talk about love my dis I want to talk about my disappointment oh. with the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, you look at Tolbert's catch in the first half. That's a busted coverage, and that's a busted coverage between yeah. Dante Jackson and Mika Fitzpatrick, two veterans who have played mm. extremely See? well not only throughout their careers but this game. And then you think about the run game of the Dallas Cowboys that has been insufficient this entire season, and you. Allow that to get going against you. Where's Patrick Queen stepping up and make making plays? And Landon Roberts making plays. And then no matter what you think about the offensive performance of Justin Fields and the lack of a run game against the Dallas Cowboys who couldn't stop it, you have the lead 17-13 late in that game in that your one. stadium. Yep. And you're supposed to be the vaunted Pittsburgh yep. Steelers <laughs> defense. Make a stop. Mm. Find a way to get a hand on a football. Find a way to get a turnover. Find a way to get to Dak Prescott. And we saw Dak Prescott recover that fumble in the end zone, but also Deshaun Elliott. You know you have the crosser. You've called cut. That's your guy. Beat him over the top. If he reverses yeah. back out to the other side, so be it. Sometimes you lose. I feel like the Steelers lost this game mm -hmm. more than the Dallas Cowboys won it, and the Steelers okay. aren't good enough to allow some of these games to slip away. Yeah, that's a good word right there, RC. And I also think George Pick needs to get the ball more for Pittsburgh, but for <laughs> Dallas, <sighs> Dallas doesn't win the game without jo Jake Ferguson. And to Mina's point, some of those other playmakers outside of CeeDee Lamb step forward. It was not only Ferguson, it was Ferguson in crucial moments, okay? So you're going to get into that yeah. bunch concept, second down in the second quarter. What they're going to do is try to create some miscommunication from the Steelers' defense, kind of like what we saw late play out in the game. They're going to have the outside guy go in, the vertical guy, and then Ferguson's the inside guy going out. He's running what we always talk about, that choice route. He could either go out, he could sit or go in. That time he reads it going out. Lovely. Second down again. There's that same bunch concept. You're going to get the outside receiver to go in. CeeDee Lamb's going to push vertical. Now, 
Ferguson's going to push up, see that spot in between those two zone defenders, and get a big conversion. This, to me, is one of the plays of the game in that game-winning drive. There's that punch again. What are they going to do? We should all know by now. The point go vertical. Outside guy goes in. Watch Ferguson read that soft zone. This time he sits again. Ball comes out on time, and then yards after the catch. I thought his play in those crucial moments, and specifically on that third down, was absolutely crucial or, or pivotal when it came to understanding what the defense was doing, running the right route versus that choice or with that choice, and giving Dak a person to throw the football to. And by the way, that pass, Prescott's first go-ahead passing touchdown in the final minute of regulation in his NFL career, regular season, and postseason. So notable wow. for sure. Hey, we're just getting started on NFL Live. The Chiefs are still undefeated, but their wins have... And they still are. So interesting to say the least um, on there that we've got people that are truly just butthurt and won't give the Cowboys any credit whatsoever. But that's okay. That's okay. So we'll see what we're going to see. And um, as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. It's going to be a very, very busy week. The Detroit Lions, this is going to be a big, big game no matter how you make it up. Um, this if the Cowboys can find a way to finally right the ship at home and get a win with Detroit, it sets up the rest of the season um, unbelievably. And we've got a lot to talk about this week, of course, with what's uh, going on with Tyler Guyton. Uh, is this going to be the new look offensive line? Uh, will the Cowboys be interested in somebody else? And I'm going to tease that uh, the Cowboys worked out wide receiver um, working at Denzel Mims. So we'll see what we see on that one. All right, good people, as always, you know we appreciate you, and we will see you soon.